Alright, so I'm just gonna make this quick video, um, kind of as an update to my last two. I took one of the, them down because I realized that, um, I did not know whoever owned that profile I was responding to. Now, firstly, I want to say that I have very good reason to think that that person was my ex, uh, mostly because of a few very specific things that they tweeted out, but, um, I have very, I now have very good reason to think that they're not my ex. That person is definitely not my ex and that there's no possible way that that person is my ex. Um, uh, so it's more likely that they're not my ex than that they are. But now that I've brought that up, firstly, I want to state that um, it was wrong of me to make a video without fully confirming that that person was my ex because they are dealing with a lot. It seems they're dealing with being uh, verbally and sexually harassed, uh, human and sex trafficked, um, uh, people who are trying to sexually assault and are this woman and touch her. Yeah, but. Um, she's made it very clear that she doesn't want anyone to draw any more attention to her situation. So I'm assuming that it's not my place to talk about at all. And I was advised by someone who is very wise to distance myself from her situation as much as humanly possible. And for my own safety. Uh, so. Um, I don't want to be attached to that situation or associated with it at all. I'm not even going to name the name of their profile in this video. Uh, so, sorry about all of that confusion. Um, second of all, while we're on the topic, um, again, what I'm about to talk about is only my experience and my situation, so I'm not diminishing her situation at all. Um, but on my situation. Uh, so I kind of go into it a lot in my old blogs on my website. My website's no longer a blog. I've um, decided to take it into a different direction now. But uh, I did deal with a codependency in the past and this codependency made me think that the relationship and my partner determined my value and worth as a human being and that I had to pretty much become nothing but an object, the perfect object for someone to use and give and give without taking, without asking for anything, without expressing my feelings or my needs or my emotions or thoughts at all. And that's what I thought I had to do to be worthy and to have value as a human being. Ugh, god damn my hair. I'm so sorry about how I look in this video. Um, so codependency, I would say, is not exactly the same as obsession. Um, no. I kind of somewhat knew about the term codependency, but I think looking back, I would describe myself as codependent. Um, now, as for obsession, I feel like that's different from codependency. If I had to use a word looking back, it would be codependent. Obsession can sometimes be healthy, sometimes unhealthy. It can involve thinking about the relationship all day every day, thinking about everything that's going wrong in the relationship, worrying about it, panicking, wondering how you can be a better partner, what if the relationship fails, you'll think about all of the worst case scenarios, the what ifs, this and that. I feel like that's like a form of anxiety, like a relationship anxiety I suppose is a good term to use. Um, a lot of people will deal with relationship anxiety, 
and it makes them obsessively worry about the relationship and what's going on with it and how they can be a better partner. On the other hand, um, I don't know if my, my narcissistic ex is still spewing this uh, narrative, but my narcissistic ex did have the gall to accuse me of being obsessed with him. And I know a lot of people do deal with narcissists who actually are obsessed with them. That can be a bit challenging if a narcissist decides to attach to you and cling on to you and obsess over you. For me, I feel like I dealt with a narcissist accusing me of being obsessed with him, which it was untrue. And I've actually read that this happens to quite a few people um, who are targets of narcissists. That they're accused of um, being obsessed with the narcissist. Particularly because a lot of narcissists do this hot and cold thing where they cycle you between love bombing and devaluation. And so when you're in the love bombing phase, they're obsessed with you. They're giving you all of this attention and adoration. And then they start devaluing you and pulling away. And it can make you obsess over them because you're wondering what happened to all of the um, attention and gifts and everything, and promises and stuff they were showering you with. Like you start obsessing over them, wondering why the relationship's different and where they, what they're doing and why aren't they talking to you anymore? Why are they ignoring your texts for several days straight? And then even more if you're, they're cheating on you because then you're gonna obsessively wonder like what are they doing with these other women like were they running off to in odd hours of the night uh so so yeah um the narcissist will then turn around and try to prevent present you as like some obsessive crazy psycho girlfriend or obsessive crazy psycho ex who just can't let them go and is like all over them following them um and so it's kind of shitty that um <laughs> that the narcissist does that but ultimately it's like everything else that the narcissist does it's to protect their ego and so it's even more insulting when my ex in my situation committed a bunch of heinous crimes against me that left me with PTSD and my blood trauma and um, months later tries to accuse me of being obsessed with them. Again, I'm not talking about the person on Twitter, I'm talking about my ex specifically and what I know he actually said. Um, so I feel like in that case, if you clearly have moved on with your life and you're trying to heal and you're, you don't want the narcissist in uh, your life, in that case, it feels like at this point, just another narcissistic boy. The narcissist is so full of themselves and has such a huge inflated ego that they think, of course you're obsessed with me. Why wouldn't you be? I'm so great and amazing and just absolutely mind-blowing. Like, of course you're obsessed with me. Who wouldn't be? That's a narcissist mindset when it comes to that. So I feel like in my case, I don't want anything to do with my ex. I don't want them in my life in any capacity. I don't want them as a friend. Sometimes I write letters in my journal that I don't intend to send where I kind of express like, how could you do this? How could you do these traumatic things to me and not care? So it's kind of just spilling out my emotions into a journal. Like if I could confront him with everything he did, what would I say? So I write that on a journal. But I don't send that to him, like I don't. So I haven't been in contact with my ex. Um, the last time I sent him a message was in June when I texted him to please leave me alone. But I also texted him in January asking him to leave me alone as well. Um, but yeah, so I haven't even attempted to contact him since then. So January and June, those two points of contact were just me asking him to leave me alone. So there's clearly no desire to have him in my life. There's no obsession. 
I haven't sent him any letters, I haven't texted him, I haven't called him, I haven't emailed him, I haven't tried to visit him. Pretty sure that person on Twitter is not him. So, but I have been accused of being obsessed with someone who's made my life a living hell in the past, and I want to just, I guess, give an example where the narcissist accuses you of being obsessed when you're not. It's their narrative. They have to have this narrative that you're the obsessive psycho ex, and they'll start accusing you of stalking them. I don't even know what state my ex lives in anymore. I don't even know his current address. I know where he lived when I was with him, but not anymore. Um, I don't know if he even, I don't, I don't know where he works anymore. I don't even know if he works at the same place. Um, I temporarily did try to work at Amazon again at a different location than he did, but my flashbacks were so intense and overwhelming uh, because of my PTSD that I had to leave, unfortunately, so... Um, it's been a struggle. I have diagnosed PTSD due to the crimes that this man committed against me. I uh, struggle every day. It's destroyed several of my relationships with people in my life, with loved ones, um, new partners. I've dated several newer people. I deal with a lot of flashbacks to the things that he did and the rumors and lies that he spread, and it's rough. There are still quite a few rumors going around, like, um, there's this girl on Facebook named Nora Winters, and she's not me. I only go by Eleanor Winters online. But she has a son. Uh, oftentimes, I don't know, I don't know why he thought that was me, but there's this rumor because of that that I have a son, that I'm a mother when I'm not, and I've never had children. Uh, so... There's that still going around. I know that's pretty benign and light. Like, oh, people think you're a mother when you're not. Who cares? I don't know. I figured I'd address that here. Um, what else? Everything, like every single rumor I've heard is all addressed in my final statement. Like literally every single one conceivable is addressed in my final statement. So at this point, I I don't really want to make a video about every single rumor I've ever heard being passed around because people have insanely short attention spans. Um, I'm not going to keep addressing everything. If you want to actually know the truth, um, there's my final statement. So the person who was arrested for tax fraud, I saw that... Uh, that arrest record, that was not me, that was someone else entirely. Uh, so I think that covers the most popular rumors I keep. Again, everything else is addressed in my final statement. Now, lastly, I want to address ooh, my hurdles. Um, I know I made a what's happening video kind of like saying I was gathering everything behind the scenes and I was about to pump out good high quality content. So what happened? Well, as soon as I started setting up those things, I realized that they didn't work. My drawing tablet is no longer supported, especially on Windows 11. So it's completely unusable. The driver doesn't install at all. And there's no workaround, unfortunately. So I'm going to have to go and get a new drawing tablet. That's okay. Um, I'm missing an HDMI cable. At my storage unit, I'm gonna have to go and get that to connect my um, my game, record my gameplay. So that was out of the picture. So I can't make my web comics. I can't make uh, gameplay let's plays. And um, I've just been dealing with too much right now to even really put effort into my website. But I'll probably try to get back to building my website soon. Um, so I, I couldn't design my logo without my drawing tablet. And uh, <laughs> to walk away from my job, and because of my PTSD, I have to permanently work gig apps now. I'm a food delivery driver, and you know, doing other odd jobs like that. 
online jobs, remote jobs. Uh, so that's kind of put a damper into how much I can do because of the financial aspect. And so I do plan to go and get my instruments very soon from my storage unit um, so that I can start learning them and making the music I've always wanted to make. Um, I've made a new cool creepy horror song. I kind of deleted it for a day because I felt like it was too scary, but um, I undeleted it and I'm really excited. It's like Five Nights at Freddy's themed. I love the Five Nights at Freddy's series. Um, recently I've been incredibly obsessed with Fable 2 and Fable 3 and I'm collecting so much information about the game and there's so much I love about it so I think I want to do a different video about it kind of going into the lore of it and maybe even a playthrough or two. So anyway that's all the updates I have for now. Um, Kind of just expressing how I feel, what's been going on with me, and uh, yeah. So I hope that I can catch everyone in the next video, which hopefully will be the high quality videos I keep saying will come. <laughs> um, but as life goes, you face hurdles, you face obstacles, but it might be a delay, but you keep going. And so that's all for this. So I'm just going to add this little um, bit at the end here. Um, I was told by someone that I was wrong about a few things um, regarding my situation with my ex, and uh, I'm not exactly sure of the specifics, but I just want to say that if I am wrong about anything, I'm sorry to all of those affected. Um, regarding the things that I got wrong and I just honestly hope for peace and healing for everyone um, yeah if you are stuck in an abusive or a dangerous situation with an abuser or a toxic person in your life please know that there's a way out if you are stuck in an abusive um, relationship or household uh, please contact the National Domestic Violence Hotline. There is a way out for you.